Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifies Tutorials. In this video we're going to look at Kohlberg's Moral Development Theory. So this is a theory which tries to understand how human beings develop moral interpretations and a little bit of background about Kohlberg's Moral Development Theory. It was highly inspired by Piaget's theory of moral development to begin with. So basically Kohlberg agreed with Piaget and wanted to develop the theory further. Just like Piaget's, uh, Kohlberg moral development theory is also a type of cognitive development theory and it's based more on the moral development side of things that analyzes how morals are developed. And how were these stages defined? Obviously just like Piaget, uh, Kohlberg also had a sample section of the population. He also selected individuals and performed various tests with them. So essentially there are three stages in the Kohlberg moral development theory and these stages have two sub-stages each which we're gonna look at through the course of this video. And basically what Kohlberg did was he used various hypothetical scenarios to actually gauge the responses of his sample population and thereby define stages. One of the most popular scenarios, hypothetical scenarios that he used was the Heinz Dilemma. And what's the Heinz Dilemma? Right, so this is the story of Mr. Heinz whose wife was dying from cancer and a very specific type of cancer and the doctors advised that there was only one very specific drug that can actually save her at this point and there was only one chemist who actually had this drug and Mr. Hines went to the chemist who happened to actually demand 10 times the cost to actually make the drug to Mr. Hines and Mr. Hines couldn't afford it literally 10 times the amount it actually costed the chemist to actually make the drug so imagine if it cost him a thousand uh, a hundred pounds let's say he actually tried to charge Mr. Hines a thousand pounds. Mr. Hines couldn't afford it so he tried reasoning with the chemist. He also tried to beg. He also tried to plead and persuade him. He also tried to 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 convince the chemist that he would actually still buy it at the price that it was offered at and paid an installment or paid later on. But the chemist didn't listen and the chemist basically just wanted to make more money because he thought that this was his ticket to success. So what happened in the end was Mr. Hines stole it from the chemist's premises that night. So this is the story and what Kohlberg did was he, he basically proposed a moral dilemma. This moral dilemma to his subjects and gauged the responses that they produced. The most common question asked was who was right in this situation was it the chemist who was right in charging whatever amount of money he wanted to for his product or was Mr. Hines right to have saved the life of his loved one by being on the wrong side of the law now let's look at the stages of moral development there are three stages essentially pre-moral conventional and post conventional now I've numbered the sub stages to be the actual stages of development so that I know it becomes easier for people to understand so the first stage is obedience and punish punishment second is individualism and exchange good interpersonal relationships is the third maintaining social order is the fourth social con contract and individual rights is the fifth and universal principles which is a discarded level is the sixth let's look at each one now looking at the pre-moral level the first stage here is obedience and punishment. This is for younger children and as we've looked at which uh, Kohlberg agreed with in Piaget's uh, theory, younger children seem to look at rules as absolutes. So if something's wrong it's absolutely wrong and there's no way around it. So they, they actually saw Mr. Hines as being completely wrong as stealing is wrong and Mr. Mr. Hines didn't do the right thing whatever be the consequence of it. 
The second level is individualism and exchange. Now, children at this level understand that rules are sort of guidelines. They're not always rigid and not always right. The intent of rules is normally good. They're, they're always made with good intentions, but it's not always necessary to follow them. So, most, most children in this, uh, in this, at this stage would believe that the druggist was actually being unfair and Mr. Hines was ultimately being right in saving his wife's life. Now, the second stage is conventional and under conventional comes in the first substage, which is good interpersonal relationships. Now, here, young adults, as, uh, as I would label them now, are, are, are people who would actually believe in family, community, trust and compassion. So, they've started looking at the world through a, through a larger lens. They've started looking at things outside of their own households and they would actually start looking at, they'd actually start developing a community spirit. So, they also believed that Mr. Hines was actually correct. Although, he went against the law, but he was still trying to protect his family. The next stage is maintaining social order. At this stage, the emphasis is heavily lays on social order and the, the socio-political system that, that exists in the world today. And individuals at this level tend to believe that laws exist for a reason. And if laws aren't followed, there will be total chaos or an, an anarchy in the world. So, they they believed with, with absolute conviction then that Mr. Hines was wrong. They were com completely convinced of that. Now, we move on to the higher levels, which is the post-conventional level, the highest level, sorry. And the first substage here is social contract and individual rights. Now, at this level, at this higher level, people understand that there can be various perspectives and basically there isn't a single perspective that actually rules the world or exists in the world. And people at this level are more accepting of different perspectives, different viewpoints than other levels. They believe, they understand that there's no simple definition of what a good society is. There are various aspects to be balanced in the right way in a good society. For instance, human rights and laws. There, there needs to be a balance for a society to be considered to be good. And people at this level understand that there's no simple answer to this. But still believe that Mr. Hines was right because what he did was ultimately saved a life. And the value of life is higher than the actual laws that are built to protect lives. Now the last level is uh, a discarded level which is universal principle. Now Kohlberg uh, actually penned this level down initially thinking that this would be a level h higher, much higher than, than any other level and very few people would actually in the history of civilization would actually get this sort of a level. And basically these are basically individuals who are capable of defining their own moral guidelines which may or may not be coherent with the society that, that exists today. The social system, the law, the political system or the society on the whole. So basically they act on, they, are, they act according to, according to a, a set of moral guidelines which they have set for themselves and then defend them. And there are very few individuals who might or might not be wrong, uh, right, sorry, who might be right, who might be wrong, but they exist at this level. And their judgments are completely different to the judgments of the rest of the society. Kohlberg, however, scrapped this level uh, later on, thinking it doesn't actually serve a purpose. Now, a very useful theory. Not without shortcomings, though. Now, one of the major shortcomings, uh, to this theory is that it applies 
it applies to individual individualism uh, based societies. So it only applies to societies that are that are mainly based on an individualistic culture and doesn't actually represent the the thought process of collective cultures. And interestingly enough, there was there was uh, a criticism on the method that Kohlberg used because he actually used an all male sample for some reason. So the theory actually only looks at the male defin the definition of morality, it doesn't actually take the female definition of or interpretation of mora morality into consideration at all. And everybody knows that the female moral consider that that female moral considerations are more well defined and are are more advanced than the mo than the male moral definition in certain ways not in every way but in certain ways they're different nevertheless and they need to be looked at the dilemmas used uh used with, with subjects to actually derive these conclusions are all hypothetical so if if everyday dilemmas uh which directly affect somebody's, uh, you know, people's lives, their own lives, are put to people. The responses could be completely different. And then again, in a very broad sense, uh, moral judgment doesn't actually link w link in with moral behavior, which is what Kohlberg, Kold you know, used to believe that in some way moral judgment actually links in with moral behavior. But there are various other factors which which can influence moral behavior a lot more than just moral judgment just because an individual thinks that you know so and so is the right answer to this hypothetical situation put forth doesn't doesn't actually imply in any way that the actions performed by the actual by the actual individual would in any way be correct or morally correct so moral behavior and moral judgment are two completely different factors. Okay, so that is a brief overview. Hopefully it was simplified enough for you. And as always, I thank you very much for your attendance. And I hope to get likes and subscriptions through this video and some support. And hopefully I'll see you uh, very shortly in the near future for the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.